Hello, I am Joris Maika Manlapig, together with Ms. Isabella de la Cruz, Mr. Frank Mateo, and Mr. Hans Mendoza. We, the Group 3, will discuss topics that is provided in this subject. The Electromechanical Age, 1840 to 1940. Electromechanical Age can be defined as the beginning of telecommunication. Several revolutionary technologies were invented in this period. The discovery of the way to harness electricity is the key advance made during this period. Knowledge and information could now be converted into electrical impulse. For the voltaic battery, tinatawag din siyang voltaic pile, invented by Alessandro Volta, and is considered to be the first source of stored energy in the 8th century. Si Volta po ay isang professor of experimental physics. Base po sa nabasa ko, nagkaroon daw po sila ng disagreement ni Luigi Galvani tungkol sa nature of electricity. Si Luigi Galvani po ay isang doctor at scientist. Yung mga experiment niya with different metals and frog muscles ay naging daan para masabi niya na yung electricity ay nagmula sa mga living organisms na kung tawagin ay animal electricity. Hindi sinangayon ni Volta yung idea na yun ni Galvani na baka yung mga metals na ginamit ni Galvani sa experiment yung nakapag-produce ng electricity, so nag-experiment siya. Gumamit siya ng copper, zinc, and paper, soap, and salt water. Pinagpatong-patong niya yon kagaya nung nasa figure. Then, yun din yung reason kung bakit tinawag na voltaic pile. So, nagkaroon ng, or naglagay siya ng connection between the zinc and copper, kaya nagkaroon ng continuous flow of electricity. For the telegraph, invented by Samuel F. J. Morse, derived from the Greek to write for. Ang function po niya ay to transmit encoded messages over a wire and gumagamit siya ng Morse code. Ano po, sir? Ay. Wait lang. Wait lang po, sir. Sabihin pa lang po. Okay po. Yung original telegraph daw po ay na-invento noong 1774, which is yung po nasa babang picture. Bulky daw po ito at maraming wires, kaya kumawa si Samuel Morse ng better version ng telegraph. 1832 na meet niya si Charles Thomas Jackson and pinag-usapan nila yung electric impulses traveling in wires. 1837, nag-apply si Samuel Morse for a patent para sa telegraph. Then, tunalungan siya ni Alfred Gale and Leonard Gale sa paggawa ng telegraph machine. May 24, 1844, the first message was typed out. What had, what had God wrote? Then, may kasama siyang dots and dashes, which is yung code for that message. So, yun po yung tawag nating Morse code. Mas naging efficient daw po yung paggamit ng telegraph dahil sa Morse code kung saan bawat letters and numbers ay may equivalent na pattern or combinations of dots and dashes. Next is the telephone. First bidirectional transmission of clear speech, invented by Alexander Graham Bell and you also have the diaphragm na ang function ay to vibrate. The history of the telephone dates back to 1667 kung saan na-create yung first acoustic string telephone. Umabot ng 209 years until Alexander Graham Bell successfully carried out the first bidirectional transmission of clear speech on March 10, 1876. Ang sabi niya, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. So, those were the first words ever spoken over a telephone line. Sa first telephone, yung sound wave ay nagkoko sa electric current para mabago yung intensity at yung frequency na nagkakos din ng tins of iron plate na tinatawag na diaphragm na ang ginagawa nga ay mag-vibrate. So yung vibration na yon ay nagtatransfer magnetically to another wire connected to a diaphragm in another distant instrument. Kapag nag-vibrate yung diaphragm, yung original sound ay ma-replicate doon sa ear of the receiving instrument. Then, radio. Invented by Guillermo Marconi. Then we have the radio waves and Marconi's law. Si Guglielmo Marconi po ay isang Italian inventor and a physicist. Kilala siya for his work in the field of long-distance radio transmission. 
And tinatawag din siya na father of radio. Isa sa mga say... Apo. So first telephone po, yung sound waves ay nagkakos sa electric current para mabago yung intensity at yung frequency na nagkakos din ng thin, soft, iron plate na tinatawag na diaphragm, which is ang ginagawa po ng diaphragm ay mag-vibrate. So, yung vibration daw po na yon ay nagka-transfer magnetically to another wire, connected to a diaphragm in another distant instrument. Kapag nag-vibrate daw po yung diaphragm, yung original sound ay may replicate doon sa ear of the receiving instrument. Then sa radio po Isa sa mga scientific development ay galing noon kay Heinrich Hertz Sinasabi niya na one could produce and detect electromagnetic radiation na tinatawag na radio waves Gumawa si Marconi ng sarili niyang wave generating equipment and nagamit naman siya for sending or transmitting long distance uh, signals to locations a mile away. Kaso parang hindi daw po niya nakuha yung interest ng Italian government, that's why pumunta siya sa London. Doon po na-recognize yung ginawa niya and he established the first wireless telegraph and signal company in 1897. 1901, gumawa siya ng first wireless telegraph na kaya mag-transmit ng long-distance electric telegraphic signals. 1901, he shared the Nobel Prize in Physics para sa development ng radio telegraph system. And doon na rin po na-discover yung Marconi's law, wherein pinapakita yung relationship between the height of the antenna and the maximum signaling distance of radio transmission. Next report. Si Miss Isabella de la Cruz po. Okay po. The war you didn't help is an American inventor and industry addict. Paul Phelps also was the first ambassador for the Department of Commerce formed to study labor abroad after World War I. He was an excellent photographer and many of his wartime and post-wartime photos were used by the government. Paul traveled, traveled the world and loved learning. Phelps was awarded the John Scott Medal of the Franklin Institute in 1889. The Franklin Institute Award, or Benjamin Franklin Medal, is an American science and engineering award presented by the Science Museum called Franklin Institute. He co-founded the Phelps and Tarrant Manufacturing Company and on January 25, 1889 and remained a major player in the calculator industry until the mid-1970s. He invented Comptometer and Comptograph. Self is best known for two inventions. The Comptometer, the first calculator, calculator featuring keys, the number rather than dials, and the first printing desk calculator, which was a modified version of the Comptometer, which is called Comptograph. Mechanical adding machines like this Comptometer were indispensable and almost indestructible office equipment until the computer era. Dorfeld's 1884 invention of a key-driven mechanical adding machine had become a big business by the 1950s when this comptometer was made. This particular comptometer was used in the accounting department of an eyewear manufacturing company from 1951 to 1967 when its operator retired. According to Gordon Bell, through effective marketing and training of skilled operators first in complement arithmetic at Schools, these machines became the workforce of the accounting profession in the first part of the 20th century. They never successfully advanced into the electromechanical era, but remained purely mechanical to function adding and subtracting machines. 
Hermann Hollerit. He was a German American statistician, inventor, and businessman who developed an electromechanical tabulating machine for punch cards to assist in summarizing information and later in accounting. His invention of the punch card tabulating machine, patented in 1884, marked the beginning of the era of mechanized binary code and semi-automatic data processing systems, and his concept dominated that landscape for nearly a century. He founded International Business Machines, or IBM, and became one of the largest and most successful companies of the 20th century. He was regarded as one of the seminal figures in the development of data processing. Because of his contribution, many major census bureaus around the world leased his equipment and purchased his card, as did major insurance companies. Polaroid's machine were used for censuses in England and Wales, Italy, Russia, Austria, Puerto Rico, and Philippines, and again in the 1900 census. IBM, also known as International Business Machines, is a global technology company that offers hardware, software, cloud-based services, and cognitive computing. Charles Flint founded the compute, computing recording company in 1911, following the merger of four companies in New York State. Ay, meron pong tatlong components ang IBM. For their technologies, the main frames at their core are high-performance computer with large amounts of memory and processors that can process billions of simple calculations and transactions in real time. Commercial databases, transaction servers, and applications requiring high resiliency, security, and agility rely on the mainframe. For their services, compute storage and networking and tool and developer solutions for app development. IBM is in charge of the life cycle and operation of services. A full stack cloud platform with over 170 products and services are covering data containers and blockchain. Order software. IBM says software provides consulting services and builds hybrid cloud infrastructure. The software segment generates the majority of IBM's revenue and profits. IBM aspires to be a market leader in hybrid cloud and artificial intelligence. Change the way you do business. IBM software solutions incorporate cutting-edge emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning, which are used in novel ways to address top business concerns. Otto Schweiger is a Swiss engineer who in invented the first efficient for function calculator called millionaire. The De Forest developed over 300 inventions, but only one has was successful, earning him the title Father of Radio. Lee De Forest was an American inventor who pioneered radio and motion pictures over the course of his career. He received over 300 abandoned most of his radio research to focus on developing phone film and optical sound on film process. He received the first trademark for the new system in 1919, which improved on earlier work by Finnish inventor Eric and German partnership in Thai Ergon. Electronic age, 1940 to present. Transitional phase from traditional manufacturing to a technical data economy. Ito po yung period when electrical relays allowed for the internet technology of information. So it has made communication easier and faster and it has also made information easily available to people and at cheaper rate. Next reporter po.
1941, Conrad Zuse made first programmable Fully automatic digital computer called Z3. It is called programmable because it is capable of following instructions. Z3 is an upgrade, upgraded version of Z1, but this time it is constructed with 1,300 relays and use of bi binary arithmetic. Z3 is designed to solve engineering qu equations rather than basic arithmetic problems. However, this machine uses relay, which is still too, too slow to be useful. It took three to five seconds to, to perform multiplications. The C3 was presented on May 12, 1941 to an audience of scientists in Berlin. The demonstration was a success. However, it was destroyed in a bombing raid on Berlin in 1943. Next slide. The first stored program computing. On June 21, 1948, at Manchester University, Freddie Williams, Tom Kilburn and Geoff Tootil made the first stored program computer called the Baby. A stored program computer is a computer that stores instructions in, in its memory to enable it to perform a variety of tasks in sequence. The Baby ran a 17 instruction program in 52 minutes using a memory tube. This memory tube is called William Kilburn tube, which is known as random access memory or RAM today. Each, each tube Store 2560 bits of information. Manchester Mark 1. So the baby only ever intended to be a proof of concept rather than to serve, rather than serve as a useful calculation tool. So what it has shown the new memory was reliable. Attention shifted to building a more powerful and practical machine using the same concept. And that is where they made the Manchester Mark 1. The Mark 1 is the expanded version of Baby. The size and power expanded and has added a magnetic draw for auxiliary storage. It was used to run a program to search for mercenary primes for nine hours without error. Next slide. The ABC or Atanasov Berry Computers. In 1942, John Atanasov and Clifford Berry completed the first all electronic computer the APC. APC was the first computer to use electricity in the form of vacuum tubes to make electric computation possible. The APC featured 300 vacuum tubes for control and arithmetic calculations, use of binary numbers, logic operations instead of direct counting, memory capacitors, and cards as input or output. The APC was used for complex system equations. The ABC used 30 add subtraction circuits for solving equations. It could handle the system with up to 29 equations. The, ma the machine could be fed two linear equations with up to 29 variables and a constant term and eliminate one of the variables. The work on the ABC was stopped when Ajahn Atanasov left college for a World War II assignment. Yes, Pose. Good day everyone, we are going to 
discuss the first generation of computer and the second generation of computer. Eli Noel Servador will introduce the first generation of computer during 1945 to 1959. Have you ever wondered how first generation computers were designed, how they worked? Mainframe supercomputers, workstation computers, and mini computers and such. Computers had been through changes and transitions behind what we see right now. But trust me, there's a lot going on through the going on through the brief history of the first generation computers, which is from 1945 to 1959. Next slide, please. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at right now is what we call the vacuum tubes created and designed by J. Presper Eckert and John Mouchley in 1946. Vacuum tubes are represented as one bit of its data is the size of a thumb. They are the foundation of or the basic components of the first generation computers. These tubes were very fragile glass devices and they were the only electronic components available back then. It contained electrodes which allowed electronic current to flow. Ginagamit siya as display screens, switch, or am amplifier ng computers back then. Good day everyone. I am Margaret Jasmine S. Umakyo. So the, next, the, the person in the picture is John Prosper Eckert Jr. He was born on April 9, 1919 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and died at the age of 76 on June 3, 1995. So he is the co-inventor of the first general purpose electronic computer, which is the ENIAC. He is educated at the Moore School of Electrical Engineering at the University of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. He is an American engineer. Next slide, please. So the next one is John William Moshley. So see John William Moshley, born on August 30, 1907 on Ohio and died on at the age of 72, January 8, 1980. So si silang dalawa po is silang dalawa yung co-inventor ng ENIAC. Si John William Moshley is naging professor po siya. Professor po siya ni Presper Eckert Jr. And nung during the World War II, silang dalawa po is ano na nung graduate engineer na po silang dalawa is um kinausap sila ng government ng US Army and they were asked to devise ways to accelerate the recomputation of artillery firing tables for the U.S. Army. So, ang pinropose po nilang, ayan nga, yung construction ng general purpose digital computer that would handle encoded form. And nung 1946 is na, na complete na po nila enya. Next slide, please. So, eto na enya. Papasok na dito enya. The enya stands for Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. Slide so the ENIAC is the first programmable general purpose electronic digital computer built during the World War II. And it was designed it was designed and built for the United States Army to calculate the artillery firing tables. The government of the United States cost $400,000 during the creation of the ENIA. That's all. Next spot. ETSAC. ETSAC is the abbreviation of Electronic Delay Storage Automatic Calculator. Purpose of ETSAC is that it is a large-scale electronic calculating machine in which ultrasonic delay units are used for storage of order and numbers that perform 650 instruction per second and effectively faster than the mechanical calculator by 1,500 times. ETSAC is designed in 1947 in the aftermath of World War II by a team led by Maurice Wilkes and the first successful program is in 
May 6, 1949. Its memory was initially 512 36-bit word of liquid memory, liquid mercury delay line, later extended to 1024, and its input and output were provided by paper tape. The processing unit was made of rock of vacuum tubes and merc mercury delay tube for the memory. The original EDSAC computer lasted for almost 10 years. It's generally known as the first practical general purpose stored program electronic computer as the other earlier computers were either can only perform a single task or just purely experimental. And it was one of the first that used binary digits. The reason of being created is that as Maurice Wilkes observed, he deemed that it is too time-consuming and he wants to provide mechanical aids for the mathematician, scientist, and engineer. That's the pro that's the prime motive of EDSAC being invented is to aid the research workers by providing them with faster and better facilities. Next, please. EDBAC. EDBAC is an abbreviation of Electronic Discrete Variable Automatic Computer. EDBAC are invented by John Mousley and J. Presper Eckert, who are also the inventor of ENIAC. It was designed to receive its instruction electronically as the program is coded with 0 and 1. And unlike its predecessor, ENIAC, it's, it consists of binary instead of decimal. EDBAC is designed in 1944 and started constructing in 1946 with an initial budget of $100,000, then was delivered in 1949 to the Ballistic Research Laboratory and only became operational in 1952. The purpose of EDBAC was an arithmetic-only computer working with binary number. It processed mathematical operation with a serial memory capacity of roughly about 5.5 kilobytes. The fate of EDBAC is that it is entirely outlast by other computers in the early 1960s, and thus they decided to shut it off in 1962 of Christmas holiday. Today, nothing much remains in EDBAC as it is now stored in Smithsonian National Museum of American History. Thank you. Univac or Universal Automatic Computer. It was designed by J. Presper Excret Jr. and John Mouch Lee. It is one of the earliest commercial computers. Excret Jr. and Mouch Lee delivered the first Univac to the U.S. Bureau of the Census in March 1951. Although their company, their patents, and their talents had been had been acquired by Remington Rand Incorporation in 1950. Univac was built from start as a stored program computer, so it was very different architecturally. It used an operator keyboard and console typewriter for simple or limited input and magnetic tape for all other input and output. The printed output was recorded on, ta recorded on tape and then printed by a separate tape printer. It was designed as a commercial data processing intended to replace the punched card accounting machines of the day. It could read 7,200 decimal digits per second, making it by far the fastest business machine yet built. It was a true business machine, signaling the convergence of academic computational research with the Office of Automation Trend of the late 19th and 20th centuries. As such, it ushered in the era of big iron, large mass-produced computing equipment. Its use of Eckert's mercury delay lines greatly reduced the number of vacuum tubes. Next slide. Oh. IBM 701 was the first computer in the IBM 700 series, which was responsible for bringing electronic computing to the world and the IBM's dominance in the mainframe computer market during the 1960s and the 1970s that continues today. The first IBM 701 was delivered to the IBM's world headquarters in New York. The IBM 701 can claim to be the first computer displaying the potential of artificial intelligence in Arthur Samuel's checkers playing program on February 1956. It was also known as the Defense Calculator. It was announced to the public on May 21, 1952, and it was invented and developed by Cherrier Haddad and Nathaniel Rochester based on the IAS machine at Princeton. And 
IBM is the first commercially available scientific computer and the first IBM machine in which programs were stored in an internal, addressable, and electronic memory. The second generation of computer during 1960 to 1964. During, during late 1950s and 1960s, mas nag-increase yung production, marketing, distribution, or yung commercial interest sa panahon na to. Na kung saan na-introduce ang transistors sa computer technology after ng vacuum tubes. Next, transistors were used in this generation kasi mas mura, mas nag-consume siya ng less power yung size niya is mas compact at mas reliable and faster pagdating sa calculation ng data kumpara sa vacuum tubes ng first generation. Yung Philco Corporation na isa sa mga unang nakapag-explore sa mga transistorized computers. Their company developed surface barrier transistors which has much higher frequency pressure which has much higher frequency response compared to the original point contact transistors. One of the first computing machines based on transistors was the Philco Corporation Transac S2000. It is first introduced in 1958. The surface buyer transistors is awarded contracts to the military and government computers. Yung programming Language in this generation is assembly language, a low-level programming language intended to communicate directly with a computer's hardware. And ginamit din dito yung higher level na programming which is COBOL and Fortran. Next. Next is John Bargain. He was American physicist. He was born in May 23, 1908 at Madison, U.S. He was died in January 13, 1991 in Boston. John Borden shared the 1956 prize with William B. Shockley and Walter H. Bradley for their joint invention of the transistor. And also, the transistor replaced the larger and bulkier vacuum tube and provided the technology for miniaturizing the electronic switches and other components needed in the construction of computers. Next is William Bradford Shockley. He was an American engineer and teacher. He was born in February 1910 at London. He was died in August 12, 1989 at Palo Alto, California, USA. He joined the technical staff of the Bell Telephone Laboratories in 1936 and there began experiment the semiconductors that ultimately led to the invention and development of the transistor. Where he, William Bradford Shockley working with Bardin and Bratton, he resumed his attempt to use semiconductors as amplifiers and controllers of electronic signals. Walter House Bratton, American scientist who, along with John Bardeen and William B. Shockley, won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1956 for his investigation of the properties of semiconductors, materials of which transistors are made, and for the development of the transistor. The transistor replaced the bulkier vacuum tube for many uses and, and was the forerunner of micro miniature electronic parts. Bratton earned, earned a PhD from University of Minnesota, and in 1929, he became a research physics, physicist for Bell Telephone Laboratories. His chief field of research involved the surface properties 
of solids, particularly the atomic structure of a material at, at the surface, which usually differs from its atomic structure in the interior. He, Shockley, and Bart Bardin invented the transistor in 1947. After leaving Bell Laboratories in 1967, Bratin served as adjunct professor at Whitman College, Walla Walla Wash, then was designed over Sir Emer Emeritus. He was granted a number of patents and wrote many articles on solid state physics. Next. Cobol. Common business oriented oriented language is primarily used in business fi finance and administrative system for companies and governments. COBOL is still widely used in applications deployed on mainframe computers such as large-scale batch of transaction processing jobs. However, due to its declining popularity and the retirement of experienced COBOL programmers, programs are being migrated to new platforms, rewritten in modern language or replaced with software packages. Most programming in COBOL is now purely to maintain existing applications. However, many large financial institutions were still deploying new systems in COBOL late, as late as 2006. It was created as part of a U.S. Department of Defense effort to create portable programming language for data processing. It was originally seen as a stopgap, but the Department of Defense promptly forced computer manufacturers to provide it resulting in its widespread adoption. It was standardized in 1968 and has since been revised four times. Expansions include support for structure and objects-oriented programming. The bold statement have an English-like syntax which has designed to be self-documenting and highly readable. However, it is verbose and uses over 300 reserved words in contrast with modern Succinct syntax like y is equals to x. COBOL has a more English syntax, in this case, move x to y. COBOL code is split into four divisions, identification, environment, data, and procedure, containing a rigid hierarchy of sections, paragraphs, and sentences, lacking a large standard library. The standard specific specifies 43 statements, 87 functions, and just one class. Next, Fortran. The creation of Fortran, which debuted in 1957, marked a significant stage in the, in the development of computer programming languages. Previous programming was written in machine, the first generation language or assembly, the second generation language, which required the programmer to write instructions in binary or hexadecimal arithmetic. Frustrations with the arduous nature of such programming led Bacchus to search for a simpler, more accessible way to communicate with computers. During the three-year development stage, Bacchus led an electric team of 10 international business machines, IBM, employees to create a language that combined a form of English shorthand with algebraic equations. Fortran enabled the rapid writing of computer programs that run nearly as efficiently as programs that had been laboriously hand-coded in machine language as computers were rare and extremely expensive Inefficient programmers were a greater financial financial problem than the lengthy and painstaking development of machine language program programs. With the creation of efficient higher level or natural la natural language, also known as a third generation language, computer programming moved beyond a small coterie to include engineers and scientists who were instrumental in expanding the use of computers by allowing the creation of natural language programs that run as efficiently as hand-coded hand ones. Fortran becomes the programming language of choice in the late 1950s. It was updated a number of times in the 1950s and 1960s in order to remain competitive with, with more contemporary programming languages. Fortran 77 was released in 1978 followed by Fortran 90 in 1991 and further updates in 1996, 2004, 2010, and, to, and 2018. However, fourth and fifth generation languages largely su supplanted Fortran outside academic circles beginning in the 1970s. Thanks for listening.